That's why most agents see this, this roller coaster ride of a business because they start doing the things that get a business and then they do the things that close out their business and they don't create that consistency. The most important thing as a brand new real estate agent is to absolutely nail the first 90 days after you get licensed. The difficulty is that most agents don't know where to start or what to do on a daily basis in order to actually build a successful real estate business right out the gate and start getting clients consistently. So today I brought on Brian Nisley, who's a broker owner and now team leader that has started a successful real estate team with over 37 agents and he's helped them all build massive success within their first 90 days as brand new real estate agents, taking them to agents capping and doing massive production and seeing the success based on this 90 day blueprint. So we're going to be diving into what that 90 day blueprint is so that if you're just getting licensed or maybe you were struggling this year you now have something that you can follow. Now, two quick things before we're getting started. Number one, I will link all of Brian's incredible content below. He's got a really great YouTube channel that is a reference point that you can use for your own business if you want to get clients for free with content. And I will link his calendar link below if you would like to chat with him about what it's like to get his free help to help you scale your real estate business as a new agent. So without further ado, let's dive in and show you the 90 day blueprint that you can follow in order to start closing deals as quickly as possible. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another incredibly exciting episode where today we've got on Brian Nisley out of Las Vegas and we're really going to be diving into something that I think is going to be a life changing for so many agents that maybe didn't have the year they were looking for or are struggling to build momentum. And we're going to be diving into his 90 day accelerated blueprint that has helped so many agents build momentum. So Brian, super excited to finally have you on here and uh, excited to dive into something that I think is really needed right now in the industry. Yeah, I, I really appreciate you having me on, Mike. This is exciting for me. I, you know, I showed up to the office early this morning. I'm pacing around. I'm thinking I've got so much to say right now because I think this is such an important message for for not only agents to hear, but broker owners out there that are out there struggling in this, in this current environment. So I'm excited to be here. Thanks a lot. Yeah, definitely, man. Well, I think, you know, before we start diving into the tactical things that I know you're so familiar with, why don't you just give people a bit of an understanding as who you are, where you're from, you've got some incredible achievements. Um, and I'd love to kind of set the tone with that uh, before we start diving in. So give us your story. Yeah, I mean, there, there's there's a lot to unpack there as well. I feel like I've, you know, I've gotten a lot of experience in the industry. I've been had a lot of success as well. And so uh, you know, my journey started, you know, I've been in Vegas here the entire time of my real estate career over 20 years now. I started back in the industry back in 2003, um, joined the uh, joined a, a national franchise back then with my wife. We created a, a real estate team back then with a husband and wife team and uh, quickly realized that that was not necessarily fulfilling for me, you know, working with buyers and sellers. And so I, you know, and everybody said at that time, find your own niche, you know, and, and, and so my niche at that time was like, hey, I love working with investors. I like the investing side of the business. So that's what I jumped into is I quickly jumped into, hey, I love working with investors and, and started that route. And um, then obviously the uh, 2008 crash hit and it hit hard for everyone, including me. And so we had to kind of reinvent ourselves at that time and figure out, OK, what's next? And that's really when I started, uh, you know, reaching out and looking at different avenues. And I started working with some private capital groups back then. Uh, um, and that's when I met my, my now business partner. Um, we started designing platforms for acquiring non-performing note pools and REOs. And, um, and then we stumbled on the trustee sale auction at that time as well. And so we built out this platform to basically spend spend their money on buying properties down at the auction. And so we had to figure the thing out from very beginning to to disposition. And you know, how do we acquire properties? How do we get them uh, through the trustee sale auction? How do we maximize our time down there? And so, long story short, is we built a very successful platform for acquiring those properties at auction. And the private capital group we were working for says, "Okay, we're done with that. Let's go on to something else." And uh, that's when my partner and I looked at each other at the time. We were just we were just co-workers and we said, this is this is there's a op real opportunity here. We don't want to stop doing this. We built this thing from the very beginning. Let's continue doing this. All we need is money. And then we've got an investor that said he would fund us if we jumped over. So 
we ended up opening up our own um, asset management company. So I started uh, co-founded Paragon Asset Management Group back in 2010. And um, that was kind of the start of everything for us back then. So we started flipping properties, which by the way, the investor that, uh, that uh, promised to fund us when we got over, he didn't. So <laughs> really had to start from the very beginning. You know, we started on a shoestring, started with mom and pop investors, but you know what that really taught us was some resiliency. It's like, okay, now we really have to build this thing from the ground up and we have to go out and figure out ways to, to, to raise capital figure out ways to find additional properties and find additional opportunities. How do we acquire those properties? How do we underwrite them? Because the underwriting is the, the most important part of that. And then, you know, how do we maximize the, the, the equity potential in these properties? And so we learned very, very quickly how to do that with just flipping basically condos and worked our way into now basically luxury homes and anything else that we can get our hands on, you know? So, that, that's kind of that journey. And as, as we were going through that, um, uh, the 2012, you know, bottom of the market really kind of hit and hit hard. And those are the, when that's when the hedge funds came into town and they wiped out all of our margins down at the trustee sale auction, which is where we were getting 99% of our properties. So again, you know, we looked at each other and says, here we go again. You know, the investment side of real estate is always very cyclical. So you're either on top of the heap or you're at the bottom trying to figure out how to reinvent yourself and get out of the hole. And so we, that's where we, uh, we said the hedge funds came into town. They started buying properties left and right and uh, wiped out all of our margins because they're on a, uh, on a hold strategy. You know, we're on a flip strategy. We need bigger margins. And so we ended up getting... And I think this is also a really important part that people need to hear in the industry is that building bridges is so important in this industry. It's a very, very small industry and I've really kind of built my reputation on building bridges. And I've burned one bridge in my entire career and I've regretted it every day since. And I promised myself, and it wasn't really by choice by the way, but I promised myself that everybody that I meet in this industry is I'm their client. And I treat them that way, whether it's a lender or a title or uh, escrow, they're all, I want them to want to work with me. So you build those bridges. So it, having that mentality allowed us to have the opportunity to get in front of some hedge funds. Long story short is uh, we started working with uh, one of the largest hedge funds in the country at that time. And we were trying to put a platform together for purchasing properties at the auction and purchasing off the MLS. And the auction didn't end up working out because they don't like handing over money to you that you pay cash at the auction for. So we ended up buying off the MLS. I got to a point where I closed personally closed about 600 transactions under my license in two, 2013. And it, you know, 100%, almost 100% of that business was all one client the hedge fund. So that really kind of catapulted my career at the time and it gave me a lot of recognition and you know i, I thought i was a big shot at that time like hey you know big top producer <laughs> big shot so really that's when uh that's when uh uh i had a national franchise approach me at that time and they wanted me to to open up another office and and they wanted me to open up another office that competed with one of their current franchisees in the same sub market and I, I just, I, there's no way that I'm going to do that. That is just bad business. And I don't, and again, I don't like to burn bridges, right? So bad business. And I walked away from that and decided at that time, you know, with some, with some uh, uh, coaxing from one of my uh, industry partners and friends who is a lender here in town, he says, why don't you open your own brokerage? And so that, that kind of put the seed in my head at that time. And I said, okay, let me open my own brokerage because it's number one, it was a convenience to our asset management company in disposing of the properties that we're getting through that channel. But the other part of it was I did a lot of self-development throughout my life and, and joined uh, uh, some self-development uh, training programs and did a lot of work on myself. And I realized at that point, I got into coaching at that point. And that's where really kind of the fulfillment side of the business came for me was, was coaching other people to create success and me getting success at the same time. And so that's when I said, well, if I could do this, if I could create all of this, I could certainly start a brokerage and, and have success in a brokerage. And boy, was I, uh, you know, was I wrong? Obviously there's a lot of, you know, puzzle pieces that go together to, to make a successful brokerage. And when you start, you really don't even know what some of those puzzle pieces are, but it became very, very difficult. Um, 
I, I was able to 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 really create some success with all of that through the some of the franchises with Remax, uh, you know, Hall of Fame award number two in the country, number two in the country, number six in the world, all that. So again, I thought if I started a brokerage, the intention of starting a brokerage would be basically, you know, brand recognition, agent attraction, and growth. Right? That's what every brokerage wants. And I thought that would be easy because of the success that I've been able to create outside of that, I'll start the brokerage and create that. Well, quickly learned that that is not the case at all. And um, attracting agents became, you know, I think every agent really wants to succeed. And, and really the, and sorry if I'm jumping all over the place here, I've got so much stuff to wanna to, to bring to you, but um, I think, th the mindset, motivation, and consistency is really the problem with agents um, succeeding and not necessarily the lack of training that's out there. Because you can have all the best systems and training and everything, and if agents don't have that drive and the consistency in their business, then it's very, very difficult for them to succeed. So that's when I tried to, to say, okay, I'm gonna build a better mousetrap, and I hated the recruiting side of the business. I hated it, I hated chasing agents and convincing them that I was the right brokerage for them. So I figured, let me build a better mousetrap and you know, build it and they will come type of mentality. And that obviously doesn't work as well. And uh, so that's that's kind of what leads me to where we are now is you know, several years later, I've been able to, I've been at it for about eight years now, growing the brokerage, got it to about 35 agents, and that's where you kind of get stuck. 35 agent mark was was very difficult to get to because what you're trying to do is you're trying to attract agents and at the same time you have to run your brokerage and wear 15 different hats and it makes it very difficult so the other side of your business the brand recognition and the growth side now starts to you know starts to become very difficult because you're paying all your attention in this and then you also need you know we need to get revenue in to continue to grow to bring in leverage to grow but you can't bring in the revenue because you're you know, you're wearing 15 different hats. So that's uh, that's kind of what where we are today. And, you know, that's that's the story of where it all started. Yeah, definitely. No, I love that, man. And I think, you know, as you alluded to right now is, is a really interesting time because as the market shifts, a lot of people are, are you know, fear based and, and they're struggling because of the narrative that's being shared around the market about interest rates, about the economy, about politics, about all these different things. And I think we really need to get to the root of the problem, which is what we'll kind of unpack here is that, you know, you look at YouTube channels like mine or many others that are out there. And, and if you're, you know, a lot of the training people need is a Google or a YouTube search away. Um, but a lot of people aren't executing on the training that they're getting because of some of the things we're going to unpack. And I think it's really important as agents are realizing that the majority of them did not hit their goals this year, aren't on track to hit their goals this year to really rewire how they approach their business so that in the next 12 months, it could be a different story, a better story, and one that they could be proud of and excited about and getting that momentum back that somebody had in 2020, 2021. So, you know, you had your brokerage of, of 35 agents and, and helped so many of them really succeed and, and build momentum. And, and I know a lot of that is predicated on your 90 day accelerator program. So why don't you start unpacking what that looks like? Because I think the first 90 days of somebody's business or just starting today and saying the next 90 days is so crucial because you could completely change the trajectory of your business. It doesn't take that long, but you have to be intentional with it and you have to follow the right blueprint. So why don't you kind of give us an idea as to what that looks like and we could start to unpack what agents can do starting today in order to be in a completely different position in about 90 days from now. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, I always looked at it too, for like what, what, when I first got in the business, what was the biggest issues and the biggest problems I had when I got in business? And again, that was my passion for growing better life was I really wanted to create a step-by-step -step program that created a better life for not only our clients, but our agents as well. And there's so it's such a lack of that type of training that's out there that really allows you just to, just to like plug into it and say, Hey, I don't know what to do. I'm motivated. I see a lot of agents, you know, some, some brokers say the agents are lazy. I don't believe that. I believe that agents truly want to succeed and they just don't have the right roadmap most of the time to succeed or the right training and mentorship and all that stuff that goes along with it. But I think the, the mindset and the motivation and the consistency is the biggest part to the very beginning. 
you know, trading comes into play later when you're obviously making those shifts in your business and what you need to do in order to create success through, through lead generation and getting clients and all that. But there's so much that goes into it before that. And, and we're always battling what's upstairs in our head. And I think that that's the biggest hurdle for a lot of people, whether that's the self doubt or the, you know, the negative talk that they do on a daily basis to themselves. And like, am I good enough? Can I actually do this? This is hard. And so we really, really like to dial that in and focus really, really hard in that area because that's the biggest, I, I find that's the biggest hurdle to newer agents as they come into the business. Which by the way, I, I really kind of specialize in newer agents because as a small indie brokerage, it's really hard to, to, to attract top producers into your business. And so I think that I've really become kind of the new agent whisperer, if you will, just because that's kind of been my, my bread and butter is I love, you know, I've created a lot of success in the industry and success doesn't always equal fulfillment. And for me, the fulfillment side of this business was starting my brokerage thinking, I'm going to impact as many agents' lives as I possibly can by building a better mousetrap, by, by building a step-by-step -step program that would allow agents to come in and just plug into it so they don't have to think, right? If you start thinking, you start getting overwhelmed, and then you start having all that negative self-talk, and then you don't create any success, and you find yourself starting to hide or getting busy or, you know, going out and finding a second job to drive an Uber to try to make ends meet. And then now that takes over because that's easier than building a real estate business. And so agents, uh, you know, it, it's really, really important to number one, get very, very clear on what it is that you're wanting to create in the industry and then having a roadmap to get there and then having the mindset and the consistency on a daily basis in order to create that success. And so what we've created is our 90 day, um, 90, be better in 90 days workbook training that allows us now every single day we can now focus on exactly what we're looking to create and 90 days you know it takes to create a habit so that's why we do it in in, in, in chunks of 90 days every single day we're going to focus exactly what it's not what i want them to create it's what they want to create for themselves and so that's a very important distinction as well it's like when you come in it's not about what i want for you this is your business we're going to help you build your business and your brand but having that focus and that consistency through our 90 days, and we know that there's the, the three buckets that everybody has to deal with on a, uh, on a basis that has to be in line with each other, or it's very difficult to create success, which is your health and fitness, your personal development, your relationships, and your business, right? Marketing, sales, systems, all that type of stuff. If all three of those aren't in line, then it becomes very difficult to create success in the industry because if your health is suffering, then your business is likely to suffer, your relationships are suffering and, you know, and so on and so on. So really focusing really hard on the health side of it, making sure that you're putting in your, you know, it's like, it's like when you're running a business and you have a bank account, if you're constantly taking out withdrawals out of that bank account and you're not putting any deposits in, then you're going to be broke and bankrupt. Same thing goes with your real estate business. You've got to put deposits into the right areas of your life in order to create that consistency and create that balance within those three buckets. So focusing on the fitness side is very, very heavily. We put together fitness programs, we put together um, nutrition plans. And again, just getting people out and moving on a daily basis and gets their, it really starts to get their confidence back and their motivation back. And then we start to celebrate those wins. So we don't just want to take, 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 we want to give back. So on a daily basis, we're also make sure that we're journaling at the end of the day and talking about our successes from the day and being grateful for what we've been able to accomplish along the way, because if it's just always beat, 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 agents are going to get beat down and they're going to get burned out and they're going to leave the business. And I believe that's why a lot of agents do leave the business. It's just because they don't have that particular roadmap. And then the self-development side of it is really, really important too, because that's going to be overcoming those fears and overcome the objections and all the beatdowns that we get in the business on a daily basis, you know, because we all know it, it happens on a daily basis. And so it really works towards that and, and being able to, again, keep consistency in that side and then your business, right? The business part of it is, is, is probably one of the most important parts, but without those other two, it's really hard to create that consistency in the business and then we work on our marketing sales systems our leadership all that type of stuff that allows you to go out there and create success in the business and so we focus on that on a daily basis with basically step-by-step -step checklists 
So everything that we do and everything that we've created in this brokerage, again, was, you know, our slogan is step by step to a better life. Team's name is Better Life, you know, so it really was the intention was to create that better life through all of my experiences in my um, uh, in the industry and working with multiple um, franchises throughout my industry. I've worked with you know several of them. I've taken all of the good things that I found from each of the individual franchises that I work for, and then I tried to plug in the holes of what was missing. And then you know, and again, I feel like that very initial the, the the mindset motivation and consistency is definitely what was missing from all of that you know yeah there's there's so much to unpack there and, and we always talk about this too is that you know just looking at the fact that that 90 day accelerator is predicated on um kind of standards and habits it's so important because we always talk about within our group is that you don't achieve your goals you achieve your standards or habits and there's so many people saying they want to do 24 deals or 50 deals but if you're lacking the habits that actually will lead you to that you could say you want to do a million deals you're never going to do five and i think people need to get to the root of the problem because they're so used to this instant gratification, looking for the overnight trend success, whatever the shortest path is. And that just simply doesn't exist. And you could talk to anybody that's achieved success and realize that they haven't done it via that avenue. So I love that you also talk about the fitness aspect of it, because one of the things that I find is that when people are struggling to build momentum in business, it can be a little bit more difficult to build momentum in business than other areas of your life. So if you start to build momentum and start to see tangible progress in your health and your fitness, that starts to allow you to execute at a higher level. And that inevitably starts to build momentum in your business as well. And there's no point in building massive success and then being out of shape or short of breath or low energy levels. And that's where you see a lot of top performers are in good shape. And that's why they can execute for longer with more focus because of the fact that you know, they're treating their body like a temple and fueling it properly. So, you know, I really love that you, you take a holistic approach to it. And I think a lot of agents need to understand that if you follow the right things on a daily basis, it inevitably leads to success. But that all starts with just again, as you alluded to being consistent, being disciplined and, and proper time management. So when we start looking at like that daily checklist, what would that look like on average for, you know, any given agent or, or yourself, for example, to say, okay, you know, I want to get started today, I really messed up this year. Um, I want to look at this kind of holistic approach to my business on a daily basis. What are some of the key things that people should be doing in order to start to see momentum and develop those proper habits over the next 90 days? Yeah, it, 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 it really is important. You know, we, we all want to continue to uh, level up in our business and create more success. And you said, it, you know, you going from a $5 million producer to a $10 million producer requires us to be a different person. Like we can't be the same person today at a $5 million producer and produce $10 million tomorrow. So we have to have the ability to level up no only our mindset, but our skill set. And that again goes through consistency and repetition in what we do on a daily basis. So we get very, very clear again on what it is that you're looking to create. And we go step by step on that. And it starts again, first thing very morning is talking about your fitness. So on those three areas of your life, we're gonna be working on that in order throughout the day. So you're gonna be working on some sort of uh, fitness plan and nutrition plan and uh, getting your body mind, your body right, your mind right, you get up, you're, you know, you're working on your affirmations, so you're have positive self-talk and you're walk, walking through your day and you're creating, you know, it's like manifestation, you know? I mean, it, it really is important to be able to visualize what it is that you're wanting to create and so that you're, the more you focus on something, the more you, you know, you attract it. So when you're not able to, to make that shift from the negative self-talk in the doom and gloom and the, you know, all the negativity that goes on in the world, number one, turn off the news, don't watch that. But if you're not able to overcome that and start training your mind to focus on possibilities and focus on positivity, and yeah, we all run into things on a daily basis that's going to throw us off whack. But if we train our minds on a daily basis with that consistency, it starts to become much easier to overcome those and you can do it much faster to get back on track. So that's the first thing that we really work on. And then the next thing is, uh, is going to be the um, 
personal relationships and self-development. So you, you know, you talk about audio books or uh, podcasts or YouTube channels, you know, watching content that's going to help you throughout the day, whether it's, you know, putting that into your self-development side of the business or putting into the business side, both of those things can help you in both of those areas. And so we make sure to focus on that on a daily basis. Like I'm going to do X amount of time on, uh, you know, reading my self-development books or watching podcasts or watching YouTube. And then on the relationship side of it as well, we have checklists of exactly what you need to be doing to cultivate relationships on a daily basis. And some of that stuff goes into, you know, appreciation texts and reaching out to people and talking about how much you appreciate them and cultivating those relationships, right? Because you want people to want to, to like when your phone rings and you look at the other side and it's somebody that's always positive and motivational and, and encouraging, you want to answer the phone. If it's somebody that's always negative and that's bringing you down, the last thing you want to do is answer that phone. So it just kind of helps you go into now developing those relationships and having people want to, you're attracting the right people into your life. And then it goes into your business side of the, uh, of, of the, uh, of that. Um, it goes into your business side of where now we start working on our lead generation, our marketing, our sales, our, our leadership skills, all of that type of stuff that's going to allow you to now go out there and build a business. And we have formulas for all of that um, in different ways that you do that on a daily basis. So again, it's just really open up your book, go through the checklist, don't think about it, execute consistency. And everybody sucks in the very beginning, like everything we do, like I'm sure you go look back at some of your first YouTube videos and you're like, Oh man, that's embarrassing. Oh, yeah. I mean, so, you know, we always say you, you suck until you don't. And this is, you know, it's, you just got to train your brain. You're going to get more effective and efficient at the things you do on a daily basis. Like I remember when, uh, you know, if you stop going to the gym for an extended period of time, you get back in the gym and now all of a sudden it's really difficult to get yourself going. It's really hard to get motivated to be in the gym and get out of bed. Your muscles are sore the next day. But as you start to develop those muscles and that consistency within it, now it's like you jump out of bed and you're excited to go to the gym. You're excited to get those gains and you start to start to see the like the the um, the results that you're getting from your consistent action on a daily basis. And then it motivates you to create more success and more action. And I find the best thing that that is um, that will eliminate your fears and eliminate your um, your worries and negative self-talk is action. Right. Start taking concentrated action and focus action on a daily basis. And that's exactly what this program allows you to do. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and, you know, I always find there's such a sense of fulfillment after you take action that's uncomfortable on a repeated basis. You know, I built my business in the beginning on door knocking and I hated it. But after you finish getting, you know, you know, done with your door knocking, you really do feel like this sense of achievement because you know your business just grew and you have some sort of tangible thing to show for it. It's almost like, you know, if you're doing a spin class or some sort of hard workout or cardio or whatever, it always sucks going into it. And there's almost never a day that you're excited to. But when you come out, this feeling of, you know, progress and achievement is overwhelming. And I think people need to become addicted to that. And that's why they feel so burnt out on a daily basis or discouraged and disheartened is because they're not doing any activities on a daily basis that they can look back on and say, that aspect of my life just improved. And if you start to do that, you start building a winning streak and that's where you start getting excited and all areas of your life start to elevate. So, you know, 90 days when we start looking at this, there's, you know, I'd love to kind of unpack two different things that are contrasting, which is what is the number one thing you see people, you know, do wrong as a new agent that kind of leads to, uh, struggle or leaving the business or whatever. And in contrast to that, what is the number one thing you see people doing right to build momentum using that 90 day strategy and go on to become a top producing agent? Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's a great question. And I think the, the simplest answer is showing up and doing the work number one and, uh, asking for help. You know, you find a lot of agents are afraid to ask for help. You know, they're like, I'm, I'm, I'm too, too timid, or I don't want them to think that I'm not creating success or, and so I really try to create these relationships with my agents where this is a, it's, yeah, it's a team, it's a, it's a brokerage, but it's, it's also a family. And this is, 
what we're here for is to help each other create success. And so I think that, that you know, setting that expectation up front is really important so that they feel comfortable in coming to you and saying, hey, I need help. So number one, that that's really it. And then the consistency side of it, there's so much that we do in our business, as, especially as new agents. So like, oh my gosh, I have to think about my, my listing presentation and my buyer consultation, and I have to memorize my scripts and I have to learn the contracts and I have to do all of these things that take you away from it and it's just busy work that doesn't make you successful so focusing again making sure you have a step by step so everything that we do we have a workbook on whether it's your buyer manual a buyer uh, a presentation we have a workbook on it that walks you through it absolutely step by step like step number one i have a lead okay what do i say to that lead okay here's the questions that you'll ask the lead okay what is the script now that i say once we ask all those questions to set the appointment and then we go into that so it literally leads you from lead all the way till closing and we do the same thing with our lead generation we do the same thing with our lead follow-up we do the same thing with our listing consultation but one of the other things that that i've found out through the industry that I think is a, is a big mistake that uh, a lot of agents and brokerages make is not supporting their agents in the contract to close. So contract to close is where, you know, 90% of your problems and issues come up. It's all of the busy work that doesn't make you any money. Like it's admin work that you're doing just to close out the money that you've already made. So what we've done is we've, we've designed an entire staff that has a closing where we call it our support staff and it's a contract to close. Now, this isn't just a TC where it says, hey, you're missing this document and this document. This is a true contract to close department. That's an entire team of people that's helping you from contract all the way to close. So once you as an agent with better life, you get something under contract, you literally now go back out and work on, you know, the three areas that make you money. Right, which is, you know, you're getting your leads, you're getting appointments, you're negotiating contracts and, and you're going back out there and doing it all over again. Because once you get something under contract, we take over and we completely support you. And let's be honest, we do a much better job because these are dedicated support staff members that are doing it on a daily basis than agents can do out in the field and trying to get phone calls from lenders and, and inspection companies and trying to set up while you're showing properties or on listing appointments, it just doesn't work. And so. That's why most agents see this, this roller coaster ride of a business because they start doing the things that get a business and then they do the things that close out their business and they don't create that consistency. So it's, it's, it's not rocket science. We know this. I mean, it's, 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 it's pretty easy once you get a clear path and you get a clear understanding of what you want to create and you work on that consistency on a daily basis. And it's not about hitting home runs every single day. It's about getting base hits and then celebrating those base hits so that you can continue to get that motivation and get that fulfillment and keep wanting to move forward with it. And so I, I hope that answers your question, but I think that that's really the biggest, biggest factor is, is supporting them with keeping consistency going and, you know, focusing on one or two things. That's another big thing that I see agents do is there's so many gurus, there's so many systems, there's so many ways to create success in this industry that a lot of them work and a lot of them don't. You obviously have to make sure that you're following the right people and following the right systems, but you, <laughs> you have to, you know, I mean, you have to create that consistency and, and um, yeah, I hope, hope that answers your question. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, when we start looking at one of the best ways to build that consistency with, you know, the caveat being that it's important to be consistent with the right things. And I see a lot of people that start to build consistency in their life, which is, you know, part of it, but if you're consistent with the wrong things and just being busy and not productive, you could be consistent forever and still be broke or unsuccessful. So I think making sure that, you know, one of the concepts that I think is really, really important right now, especially in the state of the market is being honest with yourself. And a lot of people are saying, and I get this all the time from especially the newer agents or the agents that are one, two years in the business and not where they want to be is they're just lying to themselves. They're saying, well, I've tried everything. I've done everything. And I'm like, okay, well, show me your videos. Show me the ads you're running. Show me the last time you prospected and the follow-up started and, and they can't, right? They've dabbled in a lot of things but they've never consistently executed for 90 days in order to build up momentum and actually have some sort of tangible data to look at and say this is or isn't working they try it once or twice don't like it get discouraged and then they dip and i think it's really important to, to build up that momentum but 
checklists are so important, right? Yeah. Having a checklist and I literally have one on the screen beside me of everything I need to get done today because I operate every single day on a checklist because it not only does it keep you focused and on track with the right activities, but you also have some sort of dopamine effect when you're crossing things off physically or digitally, knowing that you made progress and you look at the end of the day and say, wow, I got all this done. Instead of, you know, what a lot of agents do is they don't have that daily routine, that daily checklist. So they wake up and they're overwhelmed straight off the jump because they don't know what to do, where they're going, how they're getting it done. And they start trying to take action and going in a million different directions to just saying, instead of just saying, hey, I've got this checklist. And as long as I bang out these activities on a daily basis, I will build momentum. And as you alluded to, it's really not that difficult. If you prospect for two hours a day, if you spend one hour creating content a day, one hour following up a day, one hour working out a day, and then one hour doing market data research or something that benefits your clients, well, in a five, six hour day, you just built massive momentum in your business that is almost guaranteed to see tangible progress, more deals and more momentum if you do that every single day for 90 days. Like it's really not that difficult. It's just nobody wants to prospect. Nobody wants to create content. People are inconsistent with the gym because they only go when they feel like it, not when they don't. They struggle with follow up because they're doing it in a salesy way, not a value driven way. And they're making up excuses as to why they can't find market data. And it's so, so simple because we always talk about you could be a victor or a victim, right? Nobody's coming to save you except yourself. You have to look and say, regardless of my situation, I have control of it. And only once you take full control and ownership of everything in your life, good, bad or ugly, do you have the ability to start to actually make a difference. Now, you know, fast forwarding a little bit, you know, there's been a pretty cool opportunity where we've recently partnered as well. And that's been able to kind of add to the training that your agents get and, and now being able to plug them into resources. And I think that's one of the big things that is, you know, a big struggle and a big win for a lot of agents right now is, are you in an ecosystem and an environment that is actually going to be a conduit to getting the value you need, being around people that are genuinely wanting to see you win, pouring into them, and not many people are. And they're in a stagnant environment that isn't going to, you know, basically foster their growth. So, you know, why don't we kind of unpack, you know, where your journey has gone recently and what that's been able to do to help build momentum in your business as well, now that we've been able to become partners. Yeah, yeah, that's that's great. I just want to go back really quickly and talk about, too, that um, what we just talked about is so important to really dumb it down. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean to simplify things. You want to simplify it to the fact of where it doesn't feel like such a big hurdle to get to that next step if you simplify it. And if you're so overwhelmed, we need to take away everything else and focus on one thing. And then that one thing now becomes more effective and efficient again, and it allows you to build up that confidence and move into the next. So that's really, really what I want to stress here is what we've, we really, I just talked to an agent yesterday that's one of my newer agents and, and, and I told him exactly what was going on because I haven't heard from him in weeks. And I said, I know exactly what's going on with you right now. I said, <laughs> and I, I, I laid it out to a T and he says, how did you know that? I said, because we've done this a thousand times. I mean, it's in, and you see the same patterns from the same people over and over again. So it's, you know, again, just simplifying the process and getting them focused on a daily basis and getting those wins is really important. Um, and then uh, what we just talked about with, with partnering up, um, you know, I've always looked for um, mentors and, and, and trainings and systems. And you know, I wanted to build the best of everything. Right? This brokerage is all about building the best of everything. I wanted the best systems. I wanted the best training. I wanted the best mentorship, the best branding, all of that type of stuff. And in, as you know, as I've alluded to, it's very, very difficult as a small independent brokerage to build all of that out by yourself. And so you know, all of my agents rely on me as being the source of all of those things for them. And you can only spread yourself out so thin before something starts to suffer. And so that's where I really, you know, I've always looked to other mentors and always look for who is operating at the highest level that I can, that, that I can possibly find that is going to solve whatever issues in front of me right now. And, um, and, and so once you find that person and, and you, you really, what I, what I would do is I would either pay for the, the training that was out there. I would try to partner up with them. I would try to provide value so that I could gain in return 
that information so that I could now retain it. And then I could now take it and repurpose it, repackage it and put my own spin on it and give it to my agents. But the problem with that is that that takes a lot of time. There's people now that need this information now as you're going. There's agents that are that are need your information. They're, you know, I've got to put out fires, I've got to, you know, write checks, I've got to, you know, all these other things that are going on that takes you away from what I got into this business in the first place for was to, to help agents build a better business, right? Impact as many people's lives as I possibly can. And I thought by opening up my own brokerage, I was doing that. But I was so like emotionally attached to my brand and my brokerage that I couldn't see past the fact that I was stunting my own growth. Like, I, 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 like I'm being so stubborn here that I'm stunting my own growth and, and, and I don't even realize it because I'm so emotionally attached to it. I'm like, this is my baby. Why would I give it up? I got, you know, other people coming in, going back to the, to the training stuff. But I think if we're all kind of honest as trainers and coaches and mentors, it's like, there's nothing, there's not really anything really new out there. We're all just taking in the information putting our own spin on it, repurposing, repackaging it, and, and, and trying to do the best we can to, to provide our agents with everything that they need to go out there and create success. So with trying to do that, this is why I focus on the, the mindset, the motivation, the health, the fitness, your business, you know, all of that type of stuff. And then I looked at what, what's the biggest trend these days that is attracting, because agents want the same thing as brokers want, right? They want brand recognition, they want agent attraction, they want growth. It's the same thing our agents want. So as brokers, we do the same thing, but social media was the biggest one for me. It's like, I need to, you know, I started my YouTube channel six years ago. I started doing, you know, property renovations like before and afters and, you know, doing flips. And I really didn't know what I was getting into. And boy, do I wish I would have never stopped doing that by the way. But, um, but I always like to lead by example, because I find if you try to, as a trainer or mentor or coach, you try to teach somebody something that you haven't done yourself, it becomes very hypocritical or it becomes very difficult for you to teach somebody something that you haven't done. And if you lead by example, they're seeing that they're seeing you doing those things and they're seeing the success that you're creating. They're seeing the consistency in which you're doing it. And that motivates them to do it. And I've gotten agents. So, Going back to that is, is, is I look for who is the biggest guy in social media right now that I can learn from, that I can now like, like I, I want what you're doing and you're, you're leading by example and you're training it, you're teaching it and you've got success with thousands and thousands of agents. And that was you, Mike. I found you on, on social media and I said, this guy is somebody that I need to know and I need to learn everything from. And so I bought your social agent Academy training and I dove into it head first and it was amazing. And I started getting leading by example with my YouTube channel, like consistency. I'm doing two videos every single week, no matter what happens, as busy as I am as a broker owner and managing all my agents, I've got to learn this because I know that this is what's going to help them attract clients into their business and get them brand recognition and get them growth. So again, lead by example and go do that. So I jumped into it, started doing it. And I started trying to teach the same thing that you teach through your social agent academy to my agents in person on a weekly basis. But they wanted more. They're like, give me more. You've only given me this one. I'm like, I don't have enough time to give you more. Like I'm still, you know, just, so that's the problem with that. And so having partners and leverage is probably one of the most important things for growth. And so when you guys, you know, when you, and again, I hate the recruiting side of the business. So when you guys approached me, when we started to become friends and we talked and we started talking about business and, you know, I really wanted to be in your space because you're somebody that I admire and you are leading by example and you are making a massive impact on a lot of people that is attractive to me. And that's why you're attracting the people that you're attracting, including me and other broker owners and other agents around the country. And I think this is a really important message is that leverage and partnerships are everything to brand recognition, growth and agent attraction. And that's what we all want. And that is why we started to have a conversation about EXP and I didn't want to hear it. I'm like, oh, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the recruiting side of it. And here we go. And I've, I've been approached by broker owners. And I've, I mean, uh, uh, big teams. I've been approached by other agents that are top producers in EXP for many, many years. And I just said, 
it just turned me off. I'm like, no, that's, that's, that's not what I'm looking to do. I'm looking to build a brand. I'm looking to, to build the biggest thing. And all the agents are going to come because they, they know that we have the best of everything. And I, I was, I was blind to one of the best opportunities that I've, you know, that I didn't know existed that I now know existed or exists. And, um, so it took me a good six months after you and I went over all the numbers and we went over what it would look like if you were to add all of these, all of this leverage, all of this brand recognition and agent attraction into your business and, and partner up what that would look like. And yeah, anytime you make a shift or a change in your business model, you're going to take a short term, possibly take a, a little bit of a short term hit for the long term gains. And in my case, I was willing to lose everything to start over because that's how much I believed in what you and I were talking about, was what the future looked like. And I saw what you were building, what you have built, and you're just getting started, which by the way, which is, blows my mind and is extremely impressive. But I wanted that and I want it very badly. And so, and it's everything that I started my brokerage for. It was like, this is exactly what I was looking for when I started my brokerage, but I can't achieve it on my own. I can't as much as I want to believe that as much as I want to hold on to this, I can't do it. I'm doing not only doing myself a disservice, but I'm doing all my agents disservice because this opportunity now allows my agents to have ownership in their business, allows them to build you know, multiple streams, streams of income. And it's better for everyone, right? Better. Be better, build a better life. That's what all of this was all about for me in the very beginning. And so now that we have partnered up and I did make the jump, it took me six months of mm -hmm. contemplating this and going, why, why are you doing this? this is, you know, and then I finally realized like, no, there's, there's no other option for me at this point. I cannot continue going the way that I'm going down this path. My health is suffering. My relationships are suffering. I'm spending 14 hours a day at the office. I can't sleep at night because all I think about is business and work and how do I provide as much value as I can to my agents? Why isn't this agent producing? Why isn't this, why is this, how do I put out all these fires? You know, it's, it becomes too much as a small broker owner. And sometimes we need to let go in order to see the opportunities that are in front of us. And so I, I you know, I think every day that I met you and that we, you know, we've partnered up now because just in the first, you know, this is the first month that we partnered up and that we've made this transition over to EXP. And now I run a mega icon team over at EXP. I've retained 80% of my agents on that jump, which again, I was willing to, to lose them all. I didn't want to, right? <laughs> These, this is my family. These are my you know, people. I was hoping that they would see the same opportunity that I saw. And because I've been able to build the trust with them, I've been able to build these relationships with them that they trusted me. And then they also were able to be open to the idea of looking at the opportunity. And once they saw the opportunity, they agreed with me. And I was able to retain about 80% of them. And the 20% that I lost were, were basically part-time non-producing agents anyway, right? Which is, is exactly what I was looking for. and was kind of validation for what I built with the brokerage. And on top of that, I've been able to reduce about 80%, 80 to 90% of my expenses, all of my liability. And now my agents are excited and, and, and engaged in the growth and the opportunity. I've now have agents that are, that are attracting other agents into our business and helping them grow. And to me, that's, that's the ultimate fulfillment. So now I'm able to, to, to actually achieve what I was looking to achieve in the very beginning when I started better life. Yeah, man, it's, it's so powerful. And I think, you know, one of the key words that you said there, um, that, that I just appreciate so much is leverage. Right. And I think, you know, when we look at this, it's all about stacking skill sets and being able to complement each other's weaknesses. And I think, you know, when we look at the partnership of people now being able to partner with both of us, now they get my help and support and training with marketing, branding, sales, lead generation and advertising and everything on the social side. They get all of your incredible training and experience with helping new agents build mass momentum, turn into top producers, being able to get that 90 day blueprint and being able to get what we both offer. And I think, you know, so many people are turning a blind eye to something that they don't realize is life changing for them, which is free value stacks that are basically going to give agents every single thing they need where they don't have to spend 
thousands of dollars a month on coaching. They don't have to, you know, go learn from multiple different sources that compete against each other. This is again, as you alluded to, it's family. And when you're surrounded by people that are incentivized to help you win, they're not just doing it because, you know, like a traditional broker where you, they're getting a split and they're doing it just based on, you know, obligation. We want to see each other win. We pour into each other and we share all of our best strategies. And I think that's so cool that, you know, we've been able to see that massive jump in, in what you've been able to do and, and take that to a completely different level. But it all came from you just being humble and, and saying, how can I do more for the people that I care so much for? How can I give them that better life? So, you know, again, I think it's so powerful that during this time when agents are looking for that guiding light and that opportunity to help them turn the next 12 months around, this is something that truly people need to consider because we you and i have both seen what it's been able to do for so many people so um brian again any last words man of, of people that you know are watching this and, and are saying you know i'm ready for a new beginning i'm, I'm ready for a fresh start yeah i i, I also want to uh you know kind of stack on what you were just talking about i think right now i feel like collaboration over competition is is just the the like overwhelming, you know, response to, to the, the partnership. You know, I'm so used to this industry being so competitive, like everybody's competing with each other and it's always been that way, but I don't feel like that anymore. Ever since I've, I've, I've partnered up with you guys is now, I feel like there's so much collaboration and there's so much uh, momentum that it's gonna be hard to stop this train. It really is. Yeah. And so I really, you know, I, I think this is an important message for, for other broker owners. And again, you know, I, I'm all about agent attraction. I'm all about attraction. I want to provide value so that people want to look at the opportunity. So I'm not trying to talk anybody into, hey, this is this is a good opportunity for you. You need to make that decision on, upon yourself and, and figure it out. But all I'm saying is that you should be open to looking at the opportunity. Had I looked at this opportunity five years ago and stopped being, you know, stubborn and emotionally attached to my business and realizing that I was actually, you know, doing my, my agents a disservice and doing myself a disservice is like, just be open to the opportunity. Just be open to listening to running the numbers and seeing what it looks like in the future. And if that's the right path then great, let's partner up. If it isn't, that's okay too. And we'll tell you if it's not. You know, but it's, uh, you know, for me, it was, it, it's like, again, you know, my only regret is that I didn't do this a lot sooner. Right? Yeah. Yeah, the, the same thing goes with me. And, and I think, again, you know, everything happens for a reason and, and timing is, is a beautiful thing. And, and the fact that we've both been able to make this happen is is absolutely incredible. So again, I'm going to make sure to link all of Brian's incredible content below. And if you do want to have a conversation with both of us to get both of our help in order to help you take your business to a completely different level over the next 12 months, again, feel free to book a call with us. Everything is in the description. And again, you want to make sure to follow Brian's journey because he also practices what he preaches and walks the walk, not just talks the talk. So again, Brian, thank you so much for coming on today, brother. Um, and for everybody that stayed tuned to the end, please make sure you like, comment, subscribe, drop a comment below um, with your biggest takeaway. And we'll see you guys next time.